So we're uh, over at Brian's real facility here. He has the Reptarium, but then he also has where he actually has breeding going on. So we're kind of behind the scenes. So, you know, this is the stuff that you don't always is, get to see. This is where the sausage is made, right? This is, this <laughs> and there's some sausages in here too. This, this I awesome. say, you know, you, you don't always want to know how it's made. You just, this is how it's made, you know? So, yep, uh, yep. yeah, got my tortoise uh, coming through here. He doesn't, he doesn't know the, the idea of personal space. You yeah. Know? <laughs> He's like, I'm in the shot, right? That's awesome. The camera's on? I love him. Yeah, I want one. Yeah, one day. Yeah, Call one day. on my toe while I'm videoing. <laughs> yeah. I, bought, I actually bought one for a friend of mine and sometime soon it's going to outgrow them and I'm going to take it. <laughs> there you go. That's, that's, how so, that's how most of them come back. Yeah, yeah. That's how most of them come back. Awesome. So, so stay tuned, guys. Yep. We're going to do good. Being like into the high-end vault like that world like now my my mentality is i want to really spend more time uh producing pet vault pythons you know so whether that's uh i, I think anything under a thousand dollars can can still be considered a pet you know people will buy pie you know pie other stuff like that but uh but i don't i personally so i don't sell investment snakes anymore right like i don't like ever mm -hmm. sell someone saying buy this and make money on it if people want to buy it and breed it and make it that's fine and i'll even give people advice if they want advice but that's never my sales pitch right my sales pitch is i want to produce so really I, I i actually weirdly enough try to sometimes dumb my production down to where i'm not producing something that's twenty five hundred dollars or three thousand dollars because i don't want that animal anymore uh, i may want it for myself like sometimes i'll, I'll work on a project to produce for myself because it's really cool and I just want to keep, but I'm not looking to, to, to produce that to sell it, you know, so, but I'll show you guys, you know, some, some odds and ends and stuff like that. So. I gotta hear the story about when you went to Indonesia. <laughs> well, it, you talk about the Ritik Cave, I'm assuming. Ritik Cave, three. Ritik Cave. So it's, it's actually the cave itself is called the Sound of Lar, and, uh, which basically translates to the Ritik Cave, mm -hmm. and, or, or maybe Bat Cave. I think, it was, I think it was Ritik Cave, but I can't really quite remember. My, my Indonesian isn't that good. But uh, yeah, so I was uh, in uh, Jakarta to start with, and then we flew down to Bali, which is kind of a jumping off point. To, uh, the Flores Islands, right? You know, it's like you've got to go from, you could go from Jakarta too, but if you know, Bali to the Flores Islands, which is uh, uh, Laban Baju, which is, is, is the airport, Komodo International Airport. Um, and, By the way, great video series you did on those. It's beautiful yeah. scenery. Oh, it's amazing. So beautiful there. I mean, probably, I, I've often said, like, it's probably the prettiest place I've ever been. But, uh, but Brian Cusco, who is a good friend of mine, really was the driving force. But what was interesting was that <laughs> we, of course, you know, the Bat Cave, uh, Retic Cave is synonymous with Brady Barr getting mm -hmm. bit by the Retic, by a big Retic and stuff like that. Right and so, butt. yeah, right in the butt, and he <laughs> acted like he was getting killed or shot by a shotgun. And so somehow, and I'll be told, I, I don't know if it was Garrett Cardle or someone, I think that's who it may have been, literally had a loose lip, loose leaf paper with a map drawn on it, how to get to the cave. Okay. And somehow, uh, in our all our wisdom, we thought, let's jump on a plane, a prop plane, fly two and a half hours to La Bamba from Bali. Uh, we, we then were gonna hire a car to drive us only 43 kilometers up into the mountains, into La Bamba, or into uh, Astana Ular, and then it was about an hour hike into the woods. And of course, uh, we, had, we, had a, we had a loose leaf map, how, how could we possibly not find it? So, uh, so sure enough, we get on this plane, which I'm freaked out by, by it itself, you know. We fly there, we land there, uh, little island, um, and absolutely beautiful. Like legitimately one of the most beautiful islands I've ever been on in my entire life. Uh, and 
we were, I think we got in about 10 o'clock in the morning. We think, no, it's only 40 something miles. And we want to be there at the end, maybe at the end of the night, you know, right. when the bats are coming out or whatever the case is. So we're thinking, oh, we'll get to a hotel by the only one, only one hotel on the island. Uh, not really nice hotel, like no phone, no TV, no clock, mm -hmm. uh, you know, but the view from the balcony, stunning, you know, right. to, to the bay. But uh, so we thought we could get a little rest. But when we did our driver that takes us from the airport to the hotel says, first, he doesn't want to take us. He said, much too dangerous to drive there. And so we had to bribe him to get him to take us uh, to a sign alert. But he's like, we must leave now. And I'm like, it's like 10 in the morning. Why? It's like 40 something kilometers, which was like 30 something miles, right? Yeah. Well, sure enough, it took four hours wow. because of the treacherous drive up and the thing. So we finally get there after four hours of unbelievable, like, I don't even know if they call these roads, but we got up there. And um, it's a little village at the top of this mountain. And, uh, and I, I don't think that they see a lot of, you know, Americans, let's say, for sure. Mm -hmm. Maybe Brady Barr was the last one, I don't know. But um, regardless, uh, the driver had said we're gonna have to get permission to go to Asana Ular's caves uh, from the chief, the elders and the chief of the tribe. We thought, okay, great, you know. So we get out of the car and, and all the villagers kind of come up and they're smiling and they're kind of, you know, it's a big thing, you know, for them to have these foreigners come in. And so they're all laughing and they kind of slowly shuffle us off into this little hut, you know, no electricity or anything like that. And, and I'm thinking, I don't know what's going on here. I guess we're meeting with the elders and me and Brian sit down, my, my translator sits down. Next thing you know, the chief, a couple elders, and then all the rest of the town folk cram into this little room. And we're sitting there and for what seems like for 15, 20 minutes, we hear like, you know, blah, 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 and, and I have no idea what's going on. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I don't know if it's going well or not. It seems like they're definitely talking and negotiating they're something. smiling and nodding. Yeah, smiling. <laughs> but no, no, they're not smiling and nodding. Oh, no? It's all straight face. And all those people that were smiling when we came up in the background, straight face. Uh, like no smiles, no nothing. And it's, it's kind of creepy. And so then out of nowhere, the chief goes like this. He says something and he reaches back and a lady hands him a machete. <laughs> and, uh, and, and I'm just like, all right, we're dead. You know, it, it's over. I, I'm not kidding you. I was literally texting Lori, thinking like if I get killed, hopefully my phone will eventually ping and she'll get the last text message for me. Literally, that's what I thought, you know? And, uh, and, and you know, something, why did you take out a machete? You know? Machete of friendship. Like, yeah, machete of friendship. And what did the text say? <laughs> the text was basically just like, I love you. I don't know if I'm getting out of here alive. Uh, I'm sorry if I, I put you in this position. Some of these files on my computer. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Don't, yeah. <laughs> don't look at it. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, no, you know, so ultimately, the meeting ended, he puts his machete in a sheet, and uh, and we walk outside, still don't know what's going on, no clue. Finally, I, 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 I you know, we, we get our, and I'm like, well, are they now escorting us to where they're chopping our heads off? You know, because you gotta remember, there are definitely places in Indonesia that still head on, you know? So so I didn't, I have no idea. And so finally, our, our translator says, okay, the chief said he will take you to the cave, but he, he, you have to pay X amount of whatever. It turned out to be like 40 bucks. I'm like, yeah, I'm That's paying it. Like, <laughs> let's go. And so the, the, the funny thing is, is that in our all our wisdom, we would have never found this cave. How do you just then get to the top of a mountain and hike in? We're into the woods, man. I'm talking an hour hike into the forest, down this huge mountain, um, and, and no path, no anything. There's zero chance we ever find this cave without this guy, right? So it was great. The chief, a couple of his elders, and his daughter escorted us down to this, this cave. And, and um, it was amazing when we finally, like, round the corner and all of a sudden you see this big cave entrance. There's like a river that's maybe 20, maybe 15, 20 foot down an embankment. And um, there it is. Now the machete was for a, a ritual. Okay. And so he had actually, in a handkerchief, had an egg. And so he first takes the, 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 the machete and cuts a, a branch off a tree. And then he makes a little cradle for the egg, puts it in the ground, cradles the egg with the machete, chops the top of the egg off, and then does this amazing ritual to grant safe passage to the gods into the cave. You know? And uh, which was amazing, you know, I mean, it was one of the coolest things that I've ever experienced in my life. And I felt kind of silly afterwards thinking this guy might want to try to kill me when he was doing you something so amazing. With that next time? Yeah, yeah, I lead with the egg. You lead with the egg. Uh, but so uh, so then he did the safe passage thing. Myself and Brian went in and, and just to set the thing, it's, it's very rocky. Mm -hmm. Me and Brian literally packed a backpack with like socks, underwear, a shirt, and our cameras. 
Okay. Like all our luggage was back in Bali. No change of clothes, anything like that. And um, and so I've got my shoes. I've got to change the shoes. We're walking into this muddy, what turned out to be very bad cave. And so I take my shoes and socks off. Brian takes his shoes and socks off. We're now walking into this cave, rocky, like, you know, cutting my feet up type of thing. We, I kid you not, we get 10 feet into the cave and we find a reef. I mean, like we're That's not amazing. even we're not even in the cave. I mean, like we're like in the opening of the cave, and there, it's just a little retic, you know. Mm -hmm. But this, and, and which was awesome. So so we messed with it for a little bit, then we trudged forward. And I don't know. I mean, I might have gotten 150 yards in, something like that, to the point where when I look back, you know, the entrance of the cave looked like this. I could see sunlight like that. Okay. And, and now this time, my feet are definitely cut up. I'm sure of it. I'm into my up to my waist in bat guana. Right, which can't probably be good, you know, to be, you know, totally stepping around. Yeah, 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 totally. Nothing could go wrong. At one point, there were so many bats. At one point, I thought it was like drizzling on my head, and I remember looking up and bat poop got in my mouth. Like literally, poop got in my oh, mouth, and then I realized it's not raining. That's bat poop. And um, so we trudged a little bit forward. And to be honest with you, I ended up getting to a point where I couldn't breathe. Like I literally could not breathe. I mean, I was like completely out of breath. I couldn't catch breath. Um, Imagine so all that guana was putting a lot of like nitrous in the The nitrates were ridiculous, man. And Brian and the chief were, were still kind of ready to trudge forward. So I'm just like, guys, I have to turn around. I'm looking mm -hmm. at this cave entrance going, I'm not making it. Yeah, I'm not making it back. And as a matter of fact, when I turned around and I started walking back, uh, and, and realistically, it was still an amazing experience. I got to the cave, I got where you know the iconic scene happened, and we caught a retail. Mm -hmm. That's all I really needed. I didn't need to die, you know? <laughs> and so uh, so I started going back, and I was so shook from not being able to catch my breath, and it was at like 110 degrees, just sweating, bat poop, everything else. I, I literally fell into the guano, oh, wow. with my camera, by the way. Into the guano, and... Um, and, and I got my camera's dead, gone. Mm -hmm. Camera's dead. I did have a GoPro on my head, so that was good. And the, and the actual footage from my camera on the, the thing was okay. So I got oh, the good. footage up until that point, but going out, it was all just my GoPro. And, uh, you know, I, I finally made it out of the cave. Brian and the chief stayed in for about five minutes longer. They made it, he said, about another 100 or 200 feet up where there was a little fork in the road. And they did see, I think he said one or two retics. They weren't able to catch them. They were like up in the top of the cave. Mm -hmm. They saw them, but they weren't able to catch them. And then finally, they decided it was best to turn around and come back. But uh, but yeah, and, and then we hiked an hour and something minutes back up the hill I almost felt like I was going to die unfortunately there was a river so we were able to jump in the river and get cleaned up at least um, we hiked back and then on this 110 degree day the chief insisted that we had hot tea uh, on his porch with him we <laughs> couldn't nice. communicate but it was actually a really great moment because it was us the chief a couple elders and uh, although we didn't communicate with them very well we had our translator so it was a, it was a nice moment after what I considered a very successful adventure and uh, and then we, we took the four-hour drive back to the hotel uh, got back at like 11 o'clock at night uh, we're back on a plane at 6 in the morning back to Bali so what an amazing story it was crazy I right? can't believe that you actually found a retention like, when you think about how many times we going out hurting and just nothing like it's great walking around in nature but like nothing and then to go through all that and not get serious it would, be like it would so have been point. devastating so if we amazing. would have got there i mean and, and not and just the fact that it was literally 10 feet in the cave you know and that's cool. it was uh like i said you know although it was I, looking back it seemed like one of the most silly things i've ever done in my life it will also be one of the most interesting memories i've ever had absolutely uh, and i'm glad that i got to share it with brian and and I think he can tell the same story I tell, and I'd be interested to see what his take is on it. But uh, that's my recollection, and I'm sticking to it. But uh, it was a, it was a really cool time. So take chances and live your life, guys. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm going to go turn that light back on. It's a banana black pastel kingpin. So that came out kind of new.
is I love super right now. It's just that little, little bit of the black man. freckles starting to come through. Just a little bit. I know, right? And even just the banana chocolate pins are, are really spectacular, you know? The purple yeah. that come out in that. It's ridiculous, right? And that's what I, and again, I'm just looking for like really beautiful, yeah. That's, yeah, I pulled that out because I thought that, that was, crazy. it looks what I, just about what I thought. It was awesome. It's, I love that animal, yeah. And there's, there's two of them actually. Man, there's it's right there. around on me. Where is it? This is a diagonal. Oh, yeah, 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 because that one's in shed, so let's see if this one isn't in shed. No, oh, this one's in shed, too. <laughs> they are so good. If you like dark animals, you know what I mean? I love dark animals. Know exactly what this is. It's just cinnamon and supposed to new gene. Yeah, I don't know what the heck these things are. And what are you selling them for? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> so you got three That's total. That's a fine question, though. Oh, I like that one. That's the same? Yeah, these are all the what same. The color yeah. difference. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. These two look more the same. So know. it's uh. Oh, you guys got the good one. Let <laughs> me get the head out. There we go. Beautiful. So yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna obviously breed them out and see what what ends up happening. But new super gene. But yeah, can you imagine? I mean, look at how freaking gorgeous that is, man. Uh, yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here with Lori, <laughs> by Jack, and I'm in the, I'm in the uh, gecko suit here. Just a head though. But so head thanks for uh, joining us for this look around Brian's uh, backstage stuff, man. My beard in this is like ridiculous. So <laughs> Actually, you guys gotta help us prove, <laughs> yeah, help us prove Lori wrong. She said we have no followers. That's why she'll be in our video. It's <laughs> 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 awesome. So thanks, and uh, I don't know, like and subscribe, whatever that stuff. <laughs> <All right. laughs>